الله أكبر الله أكبر لا إله إلا الله إن الحمد لله نحمده سبحانه ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلن تجد له ولي مرشدا وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له له الملك وله الحمد يحيي ويميت وهو على كل شيء قدير اللهم اقسم لنا من خشيتك ما تحول به بيننا وبين معصيتك ومن طاعتك ما تبلغنا به جنتك ومن اليقين ما تهون به علينا مصائب الدنيا ومتعنا اللهم بأسماعنا وأبصارنا وقواتنا ما أحييتنا وجعله الوارث منا وجعل ثأرنا على من ظلمنا وانصرنا اللهم على من عادانا اللهم ولا تجعل مصيبتنا في ديننا ولا تجعل الدنيا أكبر همنا ولا مبلغ علمنا ولا تسلط علينا بذنوبنا من لا يخافك ولا يرحمنا يا رب العالمين أعوذ بالله السميع العليم من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم يا أيها الناس اتقوا ربكم إن زلزلة الساعة شيء عظيم يوم ترونها تذهل كل مرضعة عما أرضعت وتضع كل ذات حمل حملها وترى الناس سكارى وما هم بسكارى ولكن عذاب الله شديد وأصلي وأسلم على مبعوث رحمة للعالمين سيدنا محمد بن عبد الله وعلى آله وصحبه ومن والاه وعنا معهم إلى يوم الدين أما بعد in the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the most compassionate, the most merciful, all praise and thanks are due to him and peace and blessings be upon his beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He who is guided by the will of Allah, no one can misguide him. And he who is misguided, no one can guide him except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We do bear witness that there is no God but Allah and Muhammad is his messenger. Respected brothers and sisters in Iman, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. The importance of the existence of Allah in our lives in light of what happens to our oppressed brothers in Gaza. We are still living a very difficult time. Still, everyone is witnessing the massacres. Everyone is witnessing the ethnic cleansing. Everyone is witnessing that. Yet, they are still patient. <laughs> if if maybe another nation was facing something similar, I'm not able to expect what could have happened. <laughs> and I think we all agree that one, if not the most important pillar in their power 
to resist against oppression is faith. Faith in what? <laughs> Definitely not faith in the aliens. <laughs> Definitely faith in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because this is the source of power. Because the source of compensation. Because we believe in the Akhirah. Or otherwise, otherwise, maybe, maybe, a person talk about self. If I were them, maybe a long time ago, I have already committed suicide, I personally. <laughs> why to stay? <laughs> why to stay suffering? Logically, mathematically, why to, stay, why to stay just to suffer? Khalas, end it. Amazingly, believe it or not, a few weeks ago, I was watching the latest statistics, statistics, from the United Nations and the big institutions about the suicide committing rates on earth from the top 10 South Korea and Russia from the top 10 the lowest three countries and suicide committing on earth the last few months are <laughs> Afghanistan Syria Syria and Iraq <laughs> believe it or not but Sheikh the I'm not talking about killing. I'm talking about suicide committing. The one who decides to end up his life by himself with the inner decision. I'm, talk, I'm discussing this. I know highest rate of murdering and killing in these countries, but by external power. I'm talking about the decision of someone to end up his life. Can you imagine? But try to analyze it. I don't care how others analyze it. I care how I and you analyze it. We know the reason. Simply because of faith. Because of the Akhirah. <laughs> because they know that there is a divine ability and capability to enforce the law and to return back the haq and to compensate you. Or otherwise, why should we stay? In light of this, this meaning, I put this, the importance of the existence of Allah in our lives in light of what happens there. The reason, yesterday, just a few hours ago, actually, subhanAllah, yesterday night, hardly, I have hardly finished 13 hours. I was just sitting here. I was discussing with your youth. The average of their age is 16. I was quoting something I liked and I wanted to share it with you, the adults. Maybe most of us, we heard about the story of Jeffrey Lang. Jeffrey Lang, please go and watch his videos on the YouTube. Very beneficial. He has many books. Jeffrey Lang is a professor in mathematics from Kansas University. Professor in mathematics. He decided to embrace Islam. So I'm not talking about a person who was just walking in the street. He was a drug addict and he was about to commit suicide. And someone told him, you might find some spiritual in this religion, Islam. Why not to try? No, 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 no. I'm speaking, when we speak about professor of mathematics, he is supposed to be from the top, top people on people in the logical thinking. Because mathematics means logic. <laughs> mathematics is the logic. So when a mathematician, as a professor in mathematics, decides to accept Islam after having all of this kind of prestigious status, definitely you need to know that really he found something very, very unique and special. And one of his books, even angels ask. Because one of the verses that really blew his mind, it was the discussion between the angels, the malak, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and Khalifa. as a non-Muslim. I don't know he was a Christian or an atheist. I'm assuming he was an atheist from the context. But anyway, he was an unbeliever. So he became a Muslim. Now, in this context, I'm quoting part of his long article many years ago in his first prayer. When the first time he decided to pray, after accepting Islam, he came to the masjid, he declared Islam, they became very happy, they talked to him about the prayer, gave him a booklet, how to do the ablution wudu and how to do the prayer. And most of the students at the university, it's, his, it's their professor, they say, hey, be careful, don't hurry, don't rush, don't push yourself, wait, don't, don't, don't. Sit said, I'm wondering, why, why to wait? <laughs> I accepted this Lord as my Lord, and I realized who is he, and I wanted to worship him, but I, know, I don't know the technicalities. So you will be with me in a journey with him, actually. I'm quoting him literally, what he said. 
So I'm not rephrasing. I will be reading what he said literally about this first experience to see the relation between the last paragraph of his talk or his article and the title of our khutbah, which is the importance of the existence of Allah in our lives. In light of what happens to oppressed ones, look what he says. I'm quoting part of it because it's a long article. He said, <clears throat> I stood in the middle of the room facing what I thought was the direction of the Qibla. I looked back to make sure I had closed the door to my apartment. Then I went forward, straightened my stance, took a deep breath, then raised my hands open with, with open palms, touching my earlobes with my thumbs. And then I said in a faint voice, God is great. Allahu Akbar. I was hoping that no one, no one would hear me because I was feeling a little emotional as I could not get rid of any, my anxiety that someone was spying on me. It's his first experience. The professor in the university. Suddenly, I realized that I had left the curtains open and I wondered, what if a neighbor saw me? I left what I was in, went to the window, then looked outside to make sure no one was there. When I saw the backyard empty, I felt relieved. So I closed the curtains and returned to the middle of the room once again. I faced the Qibla, straightened my stance and raised my hands until my thumbs touched my Ear lobes. Then I whispered, God is great, Allahu Akbar, in a low voice that could barely be heard. I read the opening of the book slowly and stammering, then followed it with a short surah in Arabic. Although I thought that any Arab would not have understood anything if he had heard my recitation that night. Then after that, I uttered the takbir again in a low voice and I bent down and kneeled until my back was perpendicular to my legs. Placing my arms on my knees, I felt embarrassed as I had never bowed down to anyone in my life. And please just put aside how we should be appreciating the ni'mah that we are living. <laughs> it's his first experience with ruku' and sujood. First experience. He said, I never, because I had never bowed down to anyone in my life. I was therefore pleased because I was alone in the room while doing this embarrassing thing. <laughs> while I was still kneeling, I repeated the phrase, Glory be to my Lord the Great, Subhanahu Rabbi al -Azim, several times. Then I stood up and read, God hears those who praise Him. Then our Lord, praise be to you, Rabbana wa lakal hamd. I felt my heart beating hard. And my excitement increased as I said some I, as I said submissively once again that it was time to prostrate. <laughs> now the big challenge, Sujud. <laughs> Can you imagine <laughs> that he was facing this battle, <laughs> the first track in his life, that we don't think about it? He said, I froze in a place as I stared at the spot in front of me where I had to fall on all fours and put my face on the ground. I couldn't do it. I couldn't do it. I couldn't bring myself to the ground. I could not humiliate myself by putting my nose to the ground like a slave who grovels before his master. I imagined that my legs were tied and unable to bend. I felt... I felt so much shame and disgrace. I imagined the laughter and laughter of my friends and acquaintances as they watched me make a fool of myself in front of them. And I imagined how much I would attract pity and ridicule among them. And I could almost hear them saying, poor Jeffrey. The Arabs hurt him in San Francisco. They made him crazy. They brought him this kind of <laughs> myth <laughs> or whatever. He was imagining all this with the whispering of the shaitan in the first rak'ah. The Arabs hurt him. Didn't that? I started praying, please, please help me with this. I took a deep breath and forced myself down. Now I was on all fours, 
Then I hesitated for a few moments and then I pressed my face to the carpet. I emptied my mind of all thoughts and uttered the phrase, Glory be to my Lord, Subhana Rabbi Al-A'la, the Most High. Three times, God is great, I said and rose from the prostration, sitting on my knees, keeping my mind blank, refusing to allow anything to distract my attention. God is great and I put my face on the ground again. While my nose was touching the ground, I started repeating the phrase, Glory be to my Lord, the Most High, Subhanahu Rabbi Ala, automatically. I was determined to end this matter, no matter what the costs. God is great, and I stood up. As I said to myself, there are still three rounds ahead of me. Can you imagine? All of this battle for one rak'ah. Still three rounds. As if you are in a fight. And still, maybe in the second round, you will lose. <laughs> still, you don't know. You have three rounds of this big fight. Just try to imagine. And by the way, my focal point has not come yet. This is just the context. I want just the last paragraph. But you need to understand his inner psychology to understand the last paragraph. If you don't understand this, this context, you will not appreciate what he <laughs> said at the end. That's why I'm quoting this. He continued, there are still three rounds ahead of me and I struggled with my emotions and pride in the remainder of my prayer. But it became easier with each round until I was almost completely calm at the end of the prostration. Then I recited the tashahud in the last sitting and finally I said salam to my right and left. As I became extremely exhausted, I remained sitting on the ground and began to review the battle I had been through. I felt embarrassed because I had to fight myself so much in order to perform the prayer until the end. So he started now looking at himself with embarrassment. I mean, wh why I'm embarrassed to do this shoot for the one who created me? I believed in him. I embraced Islam, but still, look, when it's part of your life or when it's something in you, the ada, the habits, the, you know, when you, when you keep repeating the thing, how it's difficult when someone, the same thing applicable to siyam, to hijab, the same thing, by the way. He continued, I felt embarrassed because I had to fight myself so much in order to perform the prayer until the end. With my head lower in shame, I called out, forgive me for my arrogance and stupidity, for I have come from a far place and I still have a long way to go. <laughs> ya Allah, forgive me. I came from afar. Place. I'm still ignorant, still I don't know, I don't know how, I don't know when, I don't know why, I'm still, you know, even though he was, I don't know, a professor in an American university, at least he's 30 plus or 40 plus, at least, at least. So he, he was not a young man. Many of his lifestyle habits have been already established. It's not easy to break them. One of the most difficult things in our life to change our habits. Most difficult. Look at us when we know that we are, for example, pre-diabetic and stop eating such and such from things that you love and it's your basic, basic part of your style of life. Well, life we struggle. Most of us, we don't listen. Most of us, including myself. We can't because it's, 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 it's really very difficult. Anyway, forgive me for my arrogance. I called out, forgive me my, for my arrogance and stupidity for I have come from a far place and still have a long way to go. At that moment, I felt something that I had never experienced before. And therefore, it is difficult for me to describe it in words. A wave that I can only describe as coldness swept over me. And it seemed to me that it was radiating from a point in my chest. It was a huge wave that surprised me at first. I even remember that I was shaking. However, it was more than just a physical feeling. It affected my emotions in a strange way as well. It seemed as if mercy had become embodied in a tangible form and had begun to envelop and penetrate me. Then I started crying without knowing why. Tears started streaming down my face and I found myself sobbing, sobbing hard. The more I cried, the more I felt that I, a supernatural force of kindness and compassion was embracing me. I was not crying out of guilt, although I should have been, nor out of shame or pleasure. I was as if a dam had opened, unleashing a great reservoir of fear and anger within me. 
As I write these lines, I cannot help but wonder whether God's Almighty, God Almighty's forgiveness does not merely include pardoning sins, but also healing and tranquility as well. For some time, I sat on my knees, bent on the, to the ground, sobbing with my head in my hands. When I finally stopped crying, I was extremely exhausted. This experience was so overwhelming and unfamiliar that I was not allowed to look for rational explanations for it. No rational explanations, because it's beyond, it has to do with the spirit. <laughs> it has to do with the ruh. It has to do with the power of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, how to change, how to influence. He said, I was extremely exhausted. Experience was so overwhelming, unfamiliar, that I was not allowed to look for a rational explanations for it. I then saw that this experience was too strange for me to tell anyone about it. Now, the final paragraph, where I will finish the talk and the khutbah. Look what he said now. He said, the most important thing I realized at that time was that I was in dire need of God and prayer. Before I got up, I prayed this last prayer. Oh God, if I dare to disbelieve in you again, kill me before that. I repeat, if I dare to disbelieve you in you again, kill me before that. Save me from this life. It's very difficult to live with all my shortcomings comings and faults. But I cannot live another day denying your existence. أقول قولي هذا وأستغفر الله لي ولكم فيا فوز المستغفر. إن الحمد لله تحمده سبحانه ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلن تجد له وليا مرشدا وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له له الملك وله الحمد يحيي ويميت وهو على كل شيء قدير Respected brothers and sisters Look, this is a professor in mathematics Look how he was able to delve into the depth of the core point of Islam. Look what he said. Focus now. He said, Oh God, if I dare to disbelieve in you again, kill me. This, he realized the, cons the understanding of the meaning of the kufr. Disbelief does not mean I don't know. Disbelief does not mean I'm not convinced. I know, I'm convinced, but I don't want. <laughs> this is what he's talking about. <laughs> because if I dare to, how come logically? You already know him. Can you disbelieve? Yes, reject him. Refuse listening to his commandments. That's why when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Surah Al-Baqarah said, إِنَّ الَّذِينَ يَكْتُمُونَ مَا أَنزَلْنَا مِنَ الْبَيِّنَاتِ وَالْهُدَى مِنْ بَعْدِ مَا بَيَّنَّاهُ لِلنَّاسِ فِي الْكِتَابِ أُولَئِكَ يَلْعَنُهُمُ اللَّهُ وَيَلْعَنُهُمُ اللَّاعِنُونَ Allah used, you know, this pronoun in the Qur'an, الَّذِينَ, in الَّذِينَ, one of the most powerful pronouns in the Qur'an, because it covers everyone. It covers the past, it covers the people of Fir'aun, the people of Ad and Thamud and Nuh, and it covers the people of Mecca. After them, it covers the time of the Amawiyin and the Abbasiyin. It covers the time of Al-Uthmanin. It covers the time of recent. It covers now. The politicians, the leaders, the religious, every in the Yaktumun. Yaktumun means hiding. Do they know? Definitely they know. You will not be hiding something if you don't know it. <laughs> Allah is talking about They will be condemned and cursed. Because they don't know that they know. Because they are not convinced, they are convinced. Because not, not aware, they are aware. <laughs> so what, was, what was their attitude? Rejection. I.e. Kufr. He, he realized this. This new Muslim realized the core point. That was, he was very accurate. 
as a mathematician, if I dare to disbelieve, is it possible? Tab'an, tab'an possible. Because disbelief does not mean I'm not convinced, Sheikh. No, Habibi, we are not discussing convincing and not convincing. 99% of those who do the zulm, they are convinced. They know, but they don't want to submit to him. They decided to submit to someone else, regardless. Their personal interests, desires, the groups, parties, countries, they have decided to take another God. This is the pure meaning of shirk. Shirk is not just go to bring a statue and to say, <laughs> Allah al-Uzza. No, 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 no. This was the classical traditional one. We have another lats and uzzas uh, and manats, you know, by tens. Allah al-Uzza could be my, my, my personal interest. My. Why I decided to sign with shaitan to mislead the people in my social media and to change the haqq to batil. What I'm doing? I'm worshipping my interest. I'm favoring my personal interest on the top against the killing of the children. This is exactly the concept of kufr and shirk. Literally. That's why I say, إِنَّ الَّذِينَ يَكْتُمُونَ مَا أَنزَلْنَا مِنَ الْبَيِّنَاتِ وَالْهُدَى مِنْ بَعْدِ مَا بَيَّنَّاهُ لِلنَّاسِ فِي الْكِتَابِ It's clear. They know it. What was? يَلْعَنُهُمُ اللَّهُ وَيَلْعَنُهُمُ اللَّاعِنُونَ إِنَّ الَّذِينَ كَفَّرُوا وَمَاتُوا وَهُمْ كُفَّارُ أُولَئِكَ عَلَيْهِمْ لَعَنَةُ اللَّهِ وَالْمَلَائِكَ وَالنَّاسِ أَجْمَعِينَ خَالِدِينَ فِيهَا لَا يُخَفَّفُ عَنْهُمُ الْعَذَابُ وَلَهُمْ يُنْظُرُونَ It's horrible. We need to understand this. But my point was, how important really to believe in the importance of the existence. We know that God does exist. But we need to reactivate the power, the importance, the real value of his existence in our life. In light of the amazing, amazing resistance and power that our oppressed brothers are facing thy. Allahumma arhamna fawqa al-ardi wa tahta al-ardi wa yawma al-ardi alayka ya kareem. Allahumma taqabbal shuhada'ahum wudawi jarhahum wa shfi mardahum wa tajawaz an du'afaihim ya rabbil alameen wa khudul man khadalahum wa antaqim min man khadalahum wa khanahum wa ta'anahum ya rabbil alameen wa rahamu al-mustadha'afina wa shariq al-ardi wa nagharibaha ya rabbil alameen inna Allah ya amur bil adi wa l-ihsani wa ita'i dhil qurba wa yanha'an al-fahshai wal-munkari wal-baghi ya'idhukum la'allakum tadakkaroon wa aqim salah